Good morning, everyone. Tim from the uh, Word of Life Church. Hope everyone is having a good morning. Uh, got cold on us again. <laughs> Ready for spring. Uh, but as I always say, this is the day that the Lord hath made, and you know we'll we'll rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, got uh, midweek service tonight, uh, so that'll be uh, looking for that. That'll be good. Uh, you know, you don't still there's still people, there's still churches that are having midweek services. A lot of people have shut it down to about one service a week, Sunday mornings, uh, just because of the lack of people showing up. The churches, you, you, you hear that, and they freely admit that. They said, well, we can't can't open the doors on a Wednesday night because we won't have enough people to show up to uh, to basically pay for everything. Uh, but you know, good grief, you know, that's. I don't know. That's sometimes that's a sign that you've gotten way too big. If uh, you know, I, I don't know. I'm not judging anyone. It's just a uh, good grief. I mean, uh, just so many mega churches out there, and uh, you know, some that uh, are that that still teach the truth, but others are pretty far off. Uh, you know, I never. Never mention any any names, any uh, churches or anything like that. We'll we'll uh, mention something uh, that I'd never uh, really thought of uh, while we're while we're talking about this. Before we get into some of the news articles uh, that we're going to talk about today, uh, we have a new uh, well, actually a church that's out the road from us, and they've got their back sanctuary up for sale, the building up for sale, and they've already and down the road, you know, just maybe two or three more minutes uh, away from us, uh, they've actually built a new church, a larger church, much larger church. And now the other day, a brother uh, Paul Bailey mentioned something in a message he was talking about, about uh, about don't not leaving the cross out. And uh, when new churches are being built, you know, we used to see when churches were built on the steeple, they put on the church, they would have a, a cross at the very top. A lot of times it was just, you know, well, compared to what you could see far off, it was pretty small, but, you know, de probably decent size to be seen. Um, and, uh, well, they, uh, they've they got the, this new church. Uh, well, anyway, he, he, in, in his message, he was preaching about them. Had, they were starting churches, new churches were starting to leave out the cross on these steeples. Uh, just something small, but something there they've slipped in. Well, this church has done the same thing. Uh possible they haven't put it up yet but I don't know why they would put it up and finish it and it looks all finished fine and they still don't have it up there uh, you know you're, you're 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 forgetting one of the key components of your faith right there you know uh, you know the cross was a you know uh, sign of torture and you know uh, suffering at the you know little song over the cross uh, you know of, uh, suffering and shame uh, still that's the way that uh, the Lord sacrificed himself for us so um, uh, the brother is right, Brother Paul is right. He, uh, we're not to forget the cross at all. You know, it's what the Lord is always, I say a lot, that's what the Lord hung on between the heavens and the earth uh, and died for you and I, uh, for all mankind, all that, would, all that will accept him. And I hope there's more, more and more before we, uh, before the door to mercy is shut off, before the door to the ark is closed. Oh boy, uh, pretty much what you would expect going on right now. Uh, the uh, economy is still, uh, you know, I just, I just wonder how many, how much longer everybody's going to, you know, how the news is going to try to throw shock value, you know, shock value. That's what a lot of the news uh, articles, especially the mainstream, are all about. And you know, it's it's skewered one way or the other. You know, it's either conservative or a full liberal. Now, granted, I, I am a, I guess you'd call him a pretty uber conservative guy, you know, uh, you know, have uh, biblical, you know, Christian beliefs and uh, live my life to that uh, standard uh, with the Lord's help. And, uh, you know, but uh, I don't, uh, don't get involved in the whole political debate arena. I just, uh, it makes people mad uh, that, and when you start when you start hashing out and comparing religions, 
uh, that happens. Uh, and, uh, and you know, as I said, when you're just comparing religions, let's say when you compare salvation, when you compare a relationship with the Lord and the salvation, there ain't no argument there. <laughs> that's set. That's set in stone, y'all. You got to do is just accept it, and you'll be saved. There's no debate there. Yeah, you can debate the religion until you're blue in the face. Go right ahead. Have at it. You know what? I'll stick with my relationship with the Lord and the salvation that he's given me thanks to his sacrifice. Uh, let's start in the news. Uh, well, first thing you are just talking about, uh, of course, you know, she's there. People are trying to keep her in the news as much as possible. It's, and it's Hillary Clinton. Uh, you know, just keeps on and just keeps on with these the whole Benghazi deal, the, her emails and, you know, it's... Uh, of course, I'm sure, you know, they try to show unity, the the, the Democrats, and the Republicans do as well. Uh, and that's why I guess they're not, uh, whatever's leaked could be, was probably, uh, actually, well, leaked from the other side, but also probably from the fel other people that she's going to be trying, uh, she's trying to debate against for the uh, presidential nomination. Uh, so uh, you know, people are asking why is she not in prison already? Well, my goodness, she's you know she's uh, at one point you know she was a uh, um, rising star in the uh, the new world order. Uh, still, to a certain extent, is you know the Illuminati. Uh, they they use who they will. You know when they're done with them, you know hey, you know and they'll they'll kill them. If that's you know necessary. Uh, that's what they are. They they're all, they're all about control. Uh, so uh, you know, I'm not going to get into talking about that because you know that that is that is honestly the question. And to me, that's the whole uh, news snippet to that part right there is why asking why she's not already in prison. Well, you know, nobody in power and money like that. Uh, you know that. Uh, is uh, still at least in a little bit of favor is going to do that now you know at any point that she could be thrown to the dogs but i don't see it happening anytime soon uh how to weather the coming storm uh not uh I'm just saying for the, the page to load how to weather the coming storm, Michael Snyder, with a minute to midnight. Uh, we, of course, we're not talking about that an actual weather storm. We're talking about, of course, what's in the spirit in the news there, like the economy. It's all the economy. Uh, in this edition of a minute to midnight from January 26, 2016, uh, Tony and Chris are joined by Michael Snyder, publisher of the Economic Collapse blog. He informs us that the world has never seen a year begin with such an economic downturn. Uh, you know, they're saying, you know, it's this is wor worse than uh, 2008 and uh, uh, the other year escapes me. Uh, 2029. I'm sorry, that the number, I had it right here and it just, <laughs> you, think, you think it's still really, really early. It's not. Anyway. Uh, the economic downturn, uh, Michael discusses the stock market that is collapsing, the Baltic Dry Index being at a record low, and how things are set to deteriorate further as the year progresses. He tells us that we can ex expect in the days ahead and also how he believes we should be preparing to weather the economic storm. Uh, once again, I've said this, and all the you know, and I'm, I'm far from an economic expert, uh, way far. Uh, but uh, the subject of bank bail-ins is still out there. Okay, uh, the subject of bank bail-ins is talked about, and how they are very likely, and there's going to be another something similar uh, news article I'm going to bring up about uh, this here in a little bit, and how they are very likely to occur in the future. Uh, uh, now we're talking about bank bail-ins if you don't know what that is basically uh, when everything collapses the bank shut down you know, closes down the steel doors and it's a lot tighter than a you know a, you know a vault you know uh, basically at that point and actually right now according to law the bank owns 
all the assets that you have, your money and your uh, your bank account, your savings account is considered an unsecured debt. Uh, Michael warns us, this guy Michael Snyder, uh, that uh, money in the bank, uh, in, in bank accounts, is not safe and informs us that depositors are regarded as unsecured creditors and therefore in the event of a bank collapse it will be their money that is used to prop up the bank. The situation in Europe and their new bank bailout laws is looked at and also how the move to ban cash which is coming uh, along with everything else is gathering momentum and is setting the stage to give both governments and banks more control of the people uh, it is all about control um, people it, I'll just say if you have a lot I, I know people's got a lot of money tied up in the bank uh, you know and a lot of other stuff <sighs> let me just give you this give you a, a good word of advice you know you need an exit strategy you really do um, if you're not um, um, you know at some point of course that paper money and coin money is not going to be worth anything it's just going to be you might as well you know toss it out in the street uh, use it to you know whatever stuff pillows with you know you know lay it down in your parrot's cage if you still you know uh, it'll, it will eventually be of no use uh, but while it is and you still have a way to get it out uh, I would urge you to be considering doing something along that lines. Now, as I said, don't don't brand me a financial expert and and said that well, you know, this expert said to do this, and now you know whatever. Uh, I'm not, and uh, I would never tell anyone what to do with their money. It is your money. Uh, but uh, if something happens like that, if the bank declares bail ends and shuts down then if you don't have anything at all put back then right then and there you're going to be you know people will try to go to you know churches and stuff to get you know food to help you know like that and the, 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 the you know the shelves are they're not going to have any left because there's going to be so many people that uh, don't have any money back that didn't get it out or that was living paycheck from to, to paycheck. Uh, so, uh, you know, you hate to bring news and talk about stuff like this, but people, brothers and sisters, people out there, even people that's not say, look, look at me, look at the facts of what's coming. It's not just a fear thing. Look at, at what is going on. Look at the numbers. Do the math. You know uh, uh, about what's coming. You know, we can't keep going down this track. We're going, how, look how much we're in debt right now. And I hate talking about the economy. Ugh, I can't even stand it. You know, but you got you got to warn. You got to bring it up. You got to point it out. Do your own research. Look this stuff up. There's a lot of good news sources out there. And I still think that the alternate news sources that have no axe to grind, you can find them and get the true word on the street and not what the main line news sources bring about okay now i'm not saying they do everything like that you know if you're wanting to know you know what what which celebrity had the uh you know uh, the a nose job or something like that then a lot of you know pieces about that you can find on some of these main main news sources you know if that's you know if you're into uh, entertainment news and all that but when it comes to actually sharing the truth about what's going on they're either going to you know go one direction or the other so at any rate uh let's move on uh, the, the, that that is still in play the uh, the threat of a collapse in the bank billing so uh just be forewarned you know make your own decision um but uh you know make an informed decision you know work it out in prayer uh talk about it with your your spouse you know what's the best course of action excuse me good on hot coffee uh, okay let's move on documents uncover NYPD's vast license plate reader database uh, once more again uh, when it, <laughs> it is 
why can't people see us when it, it shows? Well, people want you know believe one way and then to the one extreme and then other to another extreme, and then you have several people in the middle going, "Well, it could be this. Well, it could be that." Uh, it, when it comes to the government, it is all about control. I'm gonna skip down a little bit. Look what happened. Look what happened in Oregon. Rest news about that ended up exactly the way they wanted it to end up and how they're going to shift the blame. Some bullets were fired, some people were killed, people were arrested. That's how they wanted it to end. You're saying, no, don't wish to. Hey, that's how they've done it every time that something happens like this. Well, bro, they shouldn't have been going against the federal government. Why? They go with us all the time. They're in a, they're, you know, they're on the, this control thing, you know, they're on chariot, we're pulling the chariot and they're standing on with a whip just sitting there. Uh, am I saying fight against the government? No, but you know what? If, it, if it's going to be a tyrannical government, you know, it, and it's going to go against speaking against and saying that we're not to do God's word, that's where you got to draw the line. Stuff you can kind of bite your tongue and say, well, that's all right, just let it go. But when it starts going against God's word, then I can't follow. I, I, I'm doing God's work. You know what? All this stuff is going to be gone and, and uh, melt with fervent heat. You know, I'm going to uh, stand with the Lord, you know, what? In his, in his word because, you know, his word is still going to stand when the world's on fire and burning. But, I mean, it's, you know, well, I'll give you the actual... Uh, Said detailed, most detailed coverage yet. Said Oregon standoff, militiamen killed in shootout with the FBI. When knew that was coming, I knew it was going. When this first took off, I knew exactly what was going to happen. Same thing happened at Ruby Ridge. Same thing happened in Waco, Texas, with David Koresh and all that mess down there. Uh, you know, if you can't get them out, provoke a reaction and then blame it on them. Well, they did this, and they, uh, you know, they're going to be protected. You know, it's always going to be, it's going to be our fault. Always. Governments, well, you know, they don't have no fault about them. You know, the sheriff told, uh, what, what was it, just the other day, I did, I didn't think it did, I didn't do a news report, it was the other day. The sheriff told them, look, the feds, FBI, please just leave. Just get out of here. We'll defuse the situation after you're gone. But you're coming here as a challenge because they have took over this federal area. And you know the federal government doesn't much like a challenge against them, a la the Civil War. But anyway, not definitely not going there. Uh, so it says that you know Muslims killed in the shootout with the FBI. A traffic stop turns into deadly gunfight, ending with malicious spokesman dead and leader Amon 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 Bundy arrested along with seven others. So let's, uh, this is from the uh, dailymail.com, believe it or not. Uh, it's a, uh, a, a way outside the area news source, we'll say. Uh, let's see. Uh, I read the title. Now let me read this right here. Uh, I just I knew it was going to escalate. I didn't have any doubt in my mind that it was, it was going to escalate. I knew it was. And I bet a bunch of people you out there knew exactly the same thing. You knew what was going to happen. Uh, traffic cops stopped the Bundy brothers and seven others on Tuesday. Shots were fired. Lavoy uh, Finnegan was killed. Ryan Bundy was wounded. Finnegan. 55, a married father of 11 and grandfather of 19, acted as the malicious spokesman, told an Oregon paper a day before his death that law enforcement officials have become more hardened toward their groups. Whoa, big surprise there. I'm not talking about this guy. No, he's, he's, he's dead and gone. I'm just hot. You knew what was going to happen. Uh, 
At, at the start of the occupation, Finnegan said he would rather die for freedom than face arrest. Amon Bundy and four others were detained at the scene. They have been charged with conspiracy to impede, 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 impede federal officers. Another three were arrested elsewhere soon after, police confirmed. Not clear who opened the fire. Oh, it's, it's, it's going to be the malicious fault. You know that. The hospital and highway were on lockdown. It comes more than three weeks after the Bundy brothers led an occupation of a federal building with Burns, Oregon, to protest two ranchers being jailed. And I talked about this, why they were jailed and the story and everything. It, uh, down here, which has mug shots of, uh, everybody <laughs> just throwing them right, the, you know, right, just throwing them right there, the picture. That's uh, that's sad. Uh, grandfather of nineteen over over this, over then over then, and it shows pictures. Shows you know, good grief. You know, it's you know they got the, the, the roads blocked off. You know, you got, go to the Daily Mail dot com. And it's under the under news. Take a look. Just take, it shows the pictures of the people, uh, and it shows you know good grief. You know law enforcement helicopters. This was a big deal. Let me tell you, people uh, they, they even got got the roads closed in there. This was a big deal. This was a uh, kind of a slam dunk for the federal government. All you gotta do is a little bit of provoking, and uh, you know, hey, we'll we'll push them over the edge. We'll we'll make them do something, or if not, we'll just make it. We'll just make it up. Yeah, yeah I'll tell you, it uh, we knew it was coming to this. We knew it was what was going to happen. I'm not saying. Not saying as in prophetic, but when something happens like this, what always happens? I said, look at the things I mentioned earlier, what happens? It, they either shoot you or they burn you out of where you're at. I just, uh, that fires me up, that annoys me. I mean, look, people, let's get none of brass tacks here. I know. I know we have to obey magistrates, you know, and obey the laws of the land. I get that. I understand that. Now, something over this, they were, you know, was this handled correctly on either side? I seriously doubt it. Um, now, a lot of people on both sides are going to be, like, you know, aggravated about that. Well, no, our side's, you know. Things happen when tensions run high. I understand that when you've got two armed armed camps, you know, somebody falling down and their gun going off. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Started an entire firefight. Uh, now I'm not saying that's what happened. I'm just saying that is you know two armed camps together. It doesn't take much when tensions are high and you know something like this. Mm -mm. It, uh, oh, you know, we're, we're to obey the laws of the land. So I, 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 I said, I'm going with the Bible, and that's what it says. And I, but as I said also, when it comes across and goes against God's word, then that's where I've got to draw the line. I can't draw it in any other beliefs of, you know, and I love this country. I love the rights that we technically sort of a little bit still have or the illusion I guess you call it of it uh, wouldn't want to live anywhere else uh, but uh, you know we got you know if we lost those citizens there like I said we've got to we've got to uh, obey the laws of the land even though you know under even under a tyrannical government uh, 
you know, what are we going to do? Is everybody just going to take to arms and we're going to have another uh, have another civil war? I could almost see where that could happen, you know, but uh, just so much bloodshed, you know, over. Of course, you know, but if, but if this was something like something that against God's will, uh, you know, in a situation like this, take just over some a little piece of uh, some some land that got burnt by accident, and then all of a sudden this ends up this way. I know I'm spending quite a little bit of time here, but it just uh, it's 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 it is what it is. So you know. Let's move on. I, ha I hate it for these people. They have lost loved ones due to this. It's harm. Uh, whatever happened. Uh, like I said, I, I doubt it will, will truly know what happened. Uh, unless somebody just was not thinking right. Or. I'll just say this. I can't see. Now I don't believe these militiamen, as taught as they're being branded, uh, were were actually killers or had murder on their heart. I don't know any of them, uh, but why would you when you're when you're being when a traffic stop? Uh, especially with all and look at those pictures if you go to that website, uh, DailyMail.com. And look and, and look at the, the road being closed. All the law enforcement presence, the helicopters there. Why? Ask yourself this: Why? You sitting there, guy sitting there, you know, uh, shows you know a deputy walking up, to, or it may have been he may have been federal. I didn't get, I didn't take a quick look at his uniform. He was, you know, you know walk, was walking up to him, got an AR-15, you know. Why would you all of a sudden just go? That's it. Grab a gun and pick it up, and then all of a sudden start shot fire. You know, firing shots. Maybe he moved the wrong way. Maybe he wouldn't bring up his hands to the steering wheel. That's why maybe the cop just or the Fed, whatever, took him out. I don't know. I don't know. The, well, like I said, I, I highly doubt we'll know the actual, really details. Especially if it's something that they did, they provoked. It'll get it, it'll get paved over, and it 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 always will be our fault, the citizens' fault, the militiaman's fault, the people that stood up to the tyranny. Uh, and like I said, I'm not. You know, if it goes against God's word, then I said, I said that's where I draw the line. Um. But anyway, like, as I said, it is what it is. So, you know, let's just move on. Uh, government using the psychology of lockdown to make martial law the norm. Uh, let me scroll up here a little bit. This comes from the activist post. Uh, not sure what that is. Dot. Just want to give you the website. Activist post. Make sure it's not. Oh my goodness, come on. Okay. Activistpost.com. Um, you'll find it there. The said is the title of government using the psychology of lockdown to make martial law the norm. Well, you know, they did it when the snowstorm hit. They just trying to push through to give the president unlimited martial law power. Why can't these people on the left see all this? Or do they just care? Most of them are probably uh, rich and elitist anyway. You know, they're living, you know, or liberal out in California and, you know, that's, that's you know, oh, we're a long way from Washington. We ain't worried about, you know, uh, you know, up in Washington, you know, people living behind, you know, in uh, gated communities, you know, or, you know, luxurious, you know, penthouses and stuff like that and have all the money. Well, you know, they don't care. It's, you know, don't care about the common man. I've said that before. And you're, uh, met one person and worked with uh, one of our, I, I told this story, uh, somebody that, uh, well, he was one of our representatives uh, of our area. Actually met with me at his house and talked about 
issues I had about some laws that I wanted to get him to see if there, there could be any change to him. Uh, so, uh, you know, you have people like that uh, that, uh, that I think have a genuine concern. And if you have a concern, you know, hey, that's what they're in most for in contact and call them. I've even had another one that, uh, that I've ca called and, you know, actually called me back, believe it or not, and actually talked to him. This was a different one. Still a representative, a uh, state representative, actually. Uh, but at any rate, uh, let's get, uh, just read a little bit into this. Uh, uh, the article, the establishment. This has been uh, this, the story is by a gentleman by the name of Bernie Suarez. The establishment has been working hard over the past few years to make martial law the norm in the United States, uh, and they've done this on a lot of fronts. Different things have happened. Uh, even uh, and I'll, I'll mention something about this here in a while. Even even Hollywood is. Uh, did it to make it seem like the norm. Hollywood always, when something's going on, Hollywood always puts out something to counter it or to say, to be able to say, oh, that was just a movie. You just watched this movie and now you're on this conspiracy kick and all that stuff like that. They do this for a reason, people. Uh, everything going on at a certain time, movies will be out about that to do that and, and just same so And it, it's not changed. It's still the same. Uh, a few events which are most responsible for the normalization of martial law stand out in most of our minds. First, there was the frightening gun confiscation and private home intrusion. I'm sure everyone remembers this. Seen in the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina in 2005. Particularly after the flooding in New Orleans. Many people witnessed for the first time the real horrors of martial law as militarized police, the National Guard, and FEMA beginning to really hate that name, uh, all operating until federal orders bullied ordinary civilians around forcing them out of their homes and into a FEMA camp set up at public arenas. At the time, no one was used to seeing this here in America, granted, but after a while, people carried on with their business, but the memory of the arguably acceptable martial law scene playing out in the case of a natural disaster stayed in everyone's memory. And I'm sure everyone, I remember that. Um, I think if you do some research in the story, I believe this was the case, what happened, there was an elderly woman. I can't remember if they, uh, something happened, she didn't want to leave and didn't want to give up. You know, she had just like a little 38 or something just to protect herself, an elderly lady. Uh, something happened, they, I, I can't remember for sure, and I, maybe I shouldn't even, uh, maybe someone could do some research on that. Uh, uh, you know, it's done said and done anyway, but, uh, you know, they tried to get her out, and she's like, no, this is my home, I don't want to leave. So they ended up, uh, you know, beating her almost senseless. Uh, Maybe even I, I I tell you I want to say I think that shot ended up shooting her. Uh, I, I do remember something about they beat her pretty severely at, at the very least to get her to leave. Uh, horrible horrible stuff, you know. Uh, but I mean I understand a natural disaster, you know, wanting to get her out safe. But that is an excellent exercise and gets people used to. What's going on? They're saying, "Well, brother, how, that was just a hur hurricane that happens." Granted, but we also know to the extent about the harp antenna arrays and the stuff about weather control and weather warfare that was discussed way back in the seventies. You're saying, "What are you talking about?" I'm talking about, what, you know, chemtrails, you know. What, what, what you know the stuff that's causing the the, the man-made weather type changes they can use that against us to do something like this they can tell things that are coming because you got to remember they're serving ones at the top who uh, can see further into the future than we can. 
when it really mean you a bunch of psychics. Well, now I'm talking about the Illuminist and everything. Uh, probably have a voice to skull talk with their masters. You know, the fallen ones. And the king that's eventually going to earn. Not a king. He's not a king. A, a, a prince that's eventually going to follow the prince of this world. Um, and all just kind of comes down to the, you know, we are caught, and to, to quote a gentleman's book, a uh, gentleman uh, L.A. Marzulli's book, one of the first ones he wrote about all, everything that's going on, the cosmic chess match. Ah, uh, yeah, there is a chess match. We know, we know the winner, though, what's going to happen, but we've got to deal with this stuff every day, and it's going to get more and more apparent as time goes on. Who knows how long we have, who knows what all else is going to happen. I just know, and this will be a good time to bring this in. We, uh, uh, me and the wife, we saw previews at once about a movie called, uh, based on the book series, I'd never heard of it, but it was called, the movie's called The Fifth Wave. We saw the previews of it, and I said, well, that looks interesting, I, and it looks like exactly at, like the predictive programming that Hollywood does, like I said, you know, said, well, this is actually happening, it's going to happen, oh, you're stupid, that was just a movie, you know, that's what they do, but, uh, talking about the fifth wave, and the stuff happened, well, first of all, there's a gigantic spaceship that's like circling the earth. And at one point, you know, where this family lives at the very first, it shows you know, on the news tracking it, you know, and actually over a high and they go out and look and look. And it's just this enormous spaceship just hovering, you know, moving around, just moving around the orbit of the planet. Uh, and causing all these natural disasters, causing a, a, a mutated strain of the avian bird flu that there is no cure for. What have I been saying here recently? Or actually for a long time now that was one thing that was going to happen then there was going to be diseases that were created mutated that there would be absolutely no cure for oh the elite the ones at the top the illumina the illuminus the illuminati they've got uh, they have they have the cure for it but just in the movie and i actually we went and saw it because i was curious i wanted to see what what uh you know the big uh you know bird flipping that Hollywood was giving the Christians in this movie and at one point a young girl she's got this rifle and she finds this guy in the back room and the guy puts down his gun and the guy's holding his stomach with his other hand and covered and tension rising and stuff like that and she's got, and she's got and she, you know I, I need to see your other hand I need your other hand and eventually he pulls it out a little bit and she sees something shining now in the movie the shining part it showed it and I could tell it was the back of a, a revolver a little like a little snub nose revolver so apparently that's what you know she took her and then she ends up shooting him and killing him well she moves the coat away and all of a sudden his hand falls down you know he's got a big wound in his stomach from where he was sitting there for help and this the silver part scene was this little cross that that dropped down and start swinging. I was like, yeah, that was the big bird flipping from, from the Illuminati and the Hollywood to us Christians. As, as, as in, see what's coming, see what, you know, you're not going to be prepared, see what's going to happen to you. Yeah. Meanwhile, uh, don't make the stuff up. I mean, it's just, it's out there. It's happening. Wake up, get your head out of the sand. But at any rate, these, they, you know, this, the, I'm talking about the alien deception, you know, that there are makers and that, you know, that we're just, you know, if there are space brothers, we know that deception is coming. It's been coming. It's getting more and more apparent. More and more people are talking about it. We've got CERN opening dimensional portals at the, you know, the Large Hadrian Collider. Uh, you know, who knows what's going to come through it? You know, is it going to open the bottomless pit? You know, the star falling from heaven, the angel bringing the key to the bottomless pit, and all the stuff that's going to come out of it, including the, the ruler over that demonic army, Abaddon, or Apollyon, which means the destroyer. Whew, people. Wow. 
This movie had everything talking along those lines. You know, at the very first, you know, the first few waves, you know, was like I said, the uh, the avian bird flu, which is, you know, deadly and, you know, one of the worst ones you can get. And, of course, they, you know, they didn't go that, they, they took it up a step and said, you know, it was mutated. And on, on the, you know, it showed this big track, an old high school track area. And it's like there were just, there was body bags just lining, you know, just, just in rows, rows. You know, in a big camp area where people were warding off, you know, medical staff running around with stuff on their face. And, you know, it was just the scene when they pulled back and showed all the bodies lined up. And I was thinking, yeah, there's, there's another one. That's another, you know, bird flip from Hollywood, from the Illuminati to us. I'm telling you, people, it's the elite that exists. If you want to believe it, that's fine. You don't have to. I don't tell you what to think, and I know you guys don't tell me what to think. I just worry on what my findings is and what is real to me from the Lord. Uh, so, and it had, you know, it had floods, had tidal waves, you know, kind of end of the world type stuff, uh, and it was, uh, it was very, as I said, it was very telling. Uh, you know, they left you with a good feeling in the end. You know, all these people, these children, they band together, and uh, you know, uh, don't know if it's if it how it, how it's going to do if they're going to have a sequel. But I'm interested to see how all this is going <laughs> to turn out and pan out. I know it is, it's going to fall along the lines. Probably they're, they're going to wait until some more stuff happens in the real world, and then they're going to make and tailor their movie to that. That way, they can do the same thing again. Uh, but anyway, I brought all this comment kind of martial law because they did the same thing. You know, the military comes in, is like, you know, hey, we're that there was a reason behind this. I'm gonna spoil the movie for people, but you know, uh, you know, taking all the uh, children by bus, and it's like, oh yeah, you know, you children are gonna be safe. We're taking them to Wright Patterson Air Force Base. Wow, there, yeah, no doubt. Uh, that's really connected with the UFO and alien deception and all that stuff that goes with that. Uh, so at any rate, they uh, they take the children out and uh, they gather all the adults in a big shed area in the military, and you know, big colonels trying to talk to them and everything. And one guy, oh, hey, <laughs> does it sound familiar? One guy pulls a gun out, and you know, he's like, "I'm not, I, you know, I'm not leaving here. You're not telling me what to do. Uh, you know, I, I can." And ends up basically the situation escalates, and uh big shootout occurs in this big food hall where all the adults were gathered and you know the little girl misses the bus because you know she's trying to get something for her little brother that's on the bus she comes back and everybody including her father is dead in you know, the military and just walked out you know got in the humvee humvees and took off so that was kind of their aim was to take you know the adults out because they were being controlled by these aliens i know that sounds weird everything but like I said you know when stuff like this starts happening martial law that that's my whole point is that Hollywood always has a tail what I mean by tail but you know when you playing cards or something and if you have a good hand or have a bad hand some people notice something about you if you know if you have a bad hand and you have a look on your face or a, a blink or you know or something involuntary or a look or something that's your tail some people know if you have a good hand so you do something and the people know uh you know it's watching you or if you have a bad hand you do something and it's like oh, okay well i know he's got a bad hand so I, I know i need to you know stay in and uh, bet against him so at any rate uh Having said all that, that's exactly, you know, the psychology. There's predictive programming uh, and the psychology of these movies that are being put forth uh, and books being brought out. Um, it's just, uh, it's so wild. And uh, it's you can't, you know, you can't get people to, the prince of this world hath blinded their minds. We need, we need to open, try to do something. You know, be an effective witness and walk uprightly as God's word tells us to and be an effective witness for him. You know, you know the Lord doesn't expect us to, to, to drag somebody to an altar of repentance. For one thing, that won't work. It's not voluntary. 
the Lord hasn't, you know, the Lord may be talking to them, but you know, you can stop it and you can kill that right there if you do something as, as, as stupid as running back and grabbing somebody and, and putting them up the altar and saying, now you're going to be saved, you know. That's not, you know, you've got to be willing. The Lord's got to speak to your heart and you've got to be willing to repent and turn from your sins and accept Him as your Savior your personal savior that the Lord doesn't expect us and the Lord definitely does not tell us if they don't accept Christ to cut their head off or, or shoot them in the back of the head no one knows what I'm talking about when I, mean, uh, when I say that don't you okay let's move on I, I, it was 45 minutes I, 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 gotta, I gotta move this a little bit quicker uh, just, just certain just things is just you know how you get stuff on your mind and you know the Lord puts stuff on your mind you ponder it and uh, it kind of provokes you to action at a certain extent to, to, to talk about it or, or to do something about it you know which is fine you know if, if the Lord's guiding and directing then Godspeed go forth uh, capital controls are coming the government declares a surprise bank holiday it shuts all the banks. Well, what have we been talking about? It imposes capital controls, along with bail-ins and all that. It imposes capital controls to stop citizens from taking their money out of the country. Uh, last part says, <laughs> cash-sniffing dogs, which make drug-sniffing dogs look friendly. Uh, basically, that's a self uh, you know, that tells you exactly what that's talking about about the capital controls uh, take, um, people out there you need to have an exit strategy when you're talking about the talking about the money I can't tell you right yeah I, as I said I, I never tell you what to do with your money but you need to uh, you need to be thinking seriously you know remember the old days when the people used to have their cash and you know stuff it in the mattress and you know uh, of course, you know today it's fire safes. You know, I don't have to, have to worry about it. Uh, you need to, you need to have it. You need to have it. You need to you need to have a good. I don't want to say nest egg, but you need to have a, a good amount. Uh, but like I said, even with that, I can't guarantee how much longer after something like that happens. That you know, when the economy tanks and all that happens, how long it's going to be worth anything. But at least you know, as I said, for the meantime, you'll have it. You'll have it, and not and not be wanting. Hopefully, because since something happens like that, uh, this is one of the things. One of, actually one of the smaller things, believe it or not, this would cause ha this would cause havoc in our country when the when the economy collapses. But this is one of the smaller things that when I say the people and the church at large is not prepared for what's coming on this planet what's coming against us and they're not prepared this is just one of the smaller things you're saying this is small I'm talking about an entire going to be collapsing country tanking yeah I am because there's a lot more coming and this is not a movie this is this is this is bare bone reality, people. Any anyway, rate, come on, listen. We got to move on. Uh, urgent Fed assault on Oregon standoff. Protesters imminent. One already did. Eight arrested. Yeah, we've already talked about that. Uh, oh, be good grief! Just new. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna hush about that. Uh, Everyone heard the the the, uh, the quote: "There are no atheists in a foxhole." Well, they people challenge that, of course. But so history has shown the need for uh, great calamity and upheaval to force change. Yeah, I agree. A great financial calamity is mathematically. What did we say earlier? You know, do the math. Uh, we can't keep going the way we're going. We're so uh, look how much how many trillions, or you know. Uh, more than that in debt as uh, soon to be uh, a great financial claim is mathematically coming great change in values of all sorts will result uh, 
circus politics. Boy, ain't that the truth. Uh, will our freedom survive another presidential election? Do we simply participate in the collapse of the American Republic as it degenerates toward a totalitarian regime? Uh, we're almost there already. Uh, or do we take a stand at this moment in history and reject that? You know, that's what we were talking about earlier. And that, talking about that standoff. What we do. Is it to the point of coming across the, drawing the line in the sand? Saying who's on the Lord's side? And when they cross that line, or you, you know, do you cross that yourself? To go against the enemy? I'm talking about the line, I'm talking about, you know, is it talking about actually uh, when, before it goes against God's will, which we've talked about as Christians, we've got to, no matter what, we've got to stand. If it comes across and goes against God's word, then of course we're going to stand. We shouldn't expect anything else. You know, we got to stand for our beliefs. You know, walk the walk, you know, walk the walk, you know, and talk the talk. If you do that, uh, you know, that's one thing about when we say a lot of times your witness is not in what you say, it's how you act and how you walk and what you do. People watch. So what do you do? What do you do? Did we really want to push something like that? To Was this done? I mean, this was controlled all along. And like I said, knew that this was going to end up in some kind of disaster. Do you all of a sudden... Pick it, up, pick up where they left off, and and start a civil war. What do you do? It's just this is going to be news, and uh, just going to uh, the way they uh, the spin things, the government spin things, and the, how they how the the news does. Uh, you know, is it going to be you know this? Well, this is kind of uh, without saying it, or without coming out and saying it. There, you know, this is kind of well. When this is what happens when you challenge the federal government, you know, you're, you're toast. Uh, there's so much that can happen. I could be here another hour and talk about some of the things that can happen, but I, I we we got to go. Uh, we got we got to move on here. Um, UK commits suicide. Hmm. Muslims with multiple wives to get extra welfare benefits. Well, I think that instead of UK, that needs to be uh, that needs to be US because that's uh, that's common enough, <laughs> and that's not you know that's well, we won't get into that. Um, how do you know when your society is in the midst of collapse? Good question. Make no mistake, our system is dying. We cannot allow our false perceptions of this death to cloud the reality of it or our response to it. Um, <laughs> and, uh, this is from... Uh, uh, alt-market.com uh, let's see I don't know if it says he wrote it or not but what's interesting to me is the picture it shows a huge boot coming down and there's a guy underneath it standing there he's got a chair a table with a teapot and teacup and he's standing there with a, with painting stuff and he's painting sunny skies on the bottom of the boot you know like it's you know a false perception oh everything's rosy everything's sunny and all of a sudden squashed that's that's what it's intended to show uh be great i'd like to save that picture and <laughs> rotate that around uh social media if i did a lot of social media Let people up maybe it maybe some maybe something it takes something visual to wake some of these people up at any rate uh What is collapse? How do we define it? The author of this uh, article says he gets a lot of emails about average person's concept of collapse versus the reality of uh, reality of collapse. Uh, could be a self uh, 
self-fulfilling prophecy, as it were, uh, that they're they're pushing it and doing the news and to where you know we're gonna, you know, people's not spending uh, right now. They're they're saying that people are not spending out because of this. People are scared. They're clinging to the, their money, you know, and uh, that's why you know everybody stopped putting money in and trying to uplift the economy. That's what they say. Um, is in our son and are some of the notions of collapse in the public consciousness completely wrong wrong is a question mark uh, it's funny because skeptics opposed to the idea of a US collapse in particular will most often retort with a question they think I cannot or will not answer so so mr. Smith you guys name was Brandon Smith uh, when specifically is this supposed to supposed collapse going to take place what day and time it says my response has always been we're in the middle of a collapse right now you really can't see it in front of your sneering face <laughs> well uh yeah that's what i'm talking about if you if you just do the math and, and think clearly and quit giving into programming from these people they tell they're telling you and you just say oh, okay yeah uh and you know you're, you're so worried about yourself and your other things and what you want and you know uh and do well I, you know i'm 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 getting ready i'm doing this i'm taking a trip or i'm you know don't disturb me i'm in the middle you know forget all this everything's gonna be fine you know the government's gonna take care of us Oh boy, moving on. First Zika virus case confirmed in LA County. I was thinking they said, well, wait a minute, let me, uh, well, and this is from the Los Angeles Times. Oh, I really don't want to subscribe. Thank you very much. Uh, a young girl from Los Angeles County who traveled to El Salvador was infected with the Zika virus. That's Zika as in Z-I-K-A. Officials said Tuesday, the infection, which usually has no symptoms, worries public health experts because it appears to be linked to a recent spike of a serious birth defect in Brazil. Now, what this virus does is, uh, they said, like I said, that you often don't see any symptoms, but it leads to cause a miscarriage. And believe it or not, they I think in Brazil, they've actually said they am they 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 they're not imposing a, a ban per se but they're saying people stop having kids period right now till we get this under control what this virus does it causes it either causes a miscarriage which in some cases i think is almost mercy because when these children are born it's, it's sad it's so sad they're born with you know multiple defects some actually one of the one of the normal ones they say is a small brain and a smaller head than the average than the normal healthy baby has. Uh, I can't imagine that. Uh, but this is very real. This is happening. Uh, I actually thought there was some, someone had mentioned that there was a case uh, in Florida. So uh, uh, you know, all down that you know that way, Brazil, South America, and all that it is. If, if you have if you have plans to go down, I don't know that I would. Uh, you know, there are several ways this can be transmitted. Uh, but yeah, especially if you're if you're pregnant. Now this at one point they said they had a confirmed case that this was transmitted person to person. Uh, so it's uh, it's very sad. Uh, I don't. Uh, you know, we talk a lot about these virus. We talked earlier about you know the the, the the whole avian flu and how they it was manipulated and mutated where there's no cure. Uh, this has got people worried. This one here. Uh, now, granted, some of the kids are still born, but they've got multiple birth defects. That's that's just you know, it's funny how they're how, how they're attacking the children like that. It's not I mean not funny, but it, it's uh, we're you know to be expected. What else would you expect from the uh, the illuminists? You know. Moving on, I know a good grief for an hour. I got. I'm just gonna try to zip through these, okay? And uh, what I find, what I think is 
appropriate. Uh, and here we go, talking about some Second Amendment stuff. Got a couple articles about that. City demands firearm applicants write essay explaining need for a gun. <laughs> uh, no. Of course, the guy says after this, he says, I'll never write an essay to get my rights as an American citizen. That, uh, that would infuriate. Well, that does infuriate me. Uh, of course, you're talking about some of the people in the, in the, you know, Fox News and uh, the Republicans and everything, uh, the, the warring, with, warring and fighting with each other, you know, math. Uh, of course, it talks about the, this guy being arrested, the militia and the people shot. Uh, so that's three articles, three different sites, probably three different views. Uh, let's see. Uh, IMF, Inter International Monetary Fund, IMF, recommends indebted governments to confiscate citizens' assets. Really? The guy that wrote a link to the article said uh, that's like a vampire convention saying, drink up for tomorrow, all the blood will be gone and all the volunteer humans dead. <laughs> well, okay. All right, we're almost done here. Uh, FBI declares arbitrary halt to background check appeals. So I think there was like, I, I, I could have swore the number was like 90,000 maybe or something appeals in process uh, over stuff that, that probably was, is not even an issue. There's just something that was that flag. They said even at one point, uh, or they're trying to make it this way, that even if uh, a... A, a social security number was maybe one or two numbers close to someone who's had a criminal history that, that uh, legally, according to the law, cannot own a firearm or buy a, fire, a firearm, firearm legally, that that person would get denied and have to go through an appeal process. Uh, Said so they suggest the halt itself proves how little gun control groups really understand what actually goes into a background check for a, a gun purchase. Uh, you know, I, you know what I say about all the other. They don't want to. They don't want us to be armed. They don't want the want the common man to be armed. It's just you know, it's the same thing all through history. It's the same thing. You know, people say, oh, they're not going to take you, not going to take your guns. Well, you know what? They didn't believe in Germany that there was going to be a confiscation. And look what he, you know, Adolf Hitler. Look what Hitler did. One of the first things he did was confiscate. You know, got, got, we want a safe environment, confiscate all the guns. Oh, we got them now? Okay, let's we'll start killing people now. It's that simple. It's just that simple. Oh, no, no, it's not. Uh, you know, our government would never do that. Oh, really? Really? You really believe that? If you get a dictator, uh, and declares martial law. Why not? How many other people through history have confiscated guns? And there's a whole entire list. Do your research. You got people with just can't stand guns, can't stand guns. Do do the research. Look at look at all the history. How dictators did that. What was one of the first things they did to people before they went through and started exterminating them? Was they confiscated their guns? You can't get around that reality. Do your research. People tell me, oh, you need to do your research. I do. Look at the dictators around them. You know, start with Hitler. You know, uh, you know uh, just Lenin, you know, all, all these others, you know. Uh, it's one of the first things. It just, it kills me. Uh, you know, guns guns are bad. You know, people like guns are bad and they're evil and, you know. Uh, that, that, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that's what they always say. You know, it's just their, their tagline. That's, you know, if you make a point that they can't answer to, they just get mad and uh, just start going off on the tangent of anger. When, but of course, when you, when you uh, knock somebody's belief system in the head with, you know, just very simple logic, you know, like people that's for abortion and, uh, you know, well, this, well, they my choice and, uh, you know, uh, then at the very at the very end, uh, say okay, look at it this way. Uh, 
you know, some people, uh, I, I guess sometimes I get kind of harsh when it comes to this. Uh, I know if you had not, and I say this respectfully, if you had something happen in the past and you had an abortion, but you got forgiveness for it, the Lord has forgiven you. And I know if, I, if you, even that, it still bothers you to this day. And I hate that that happened. I hate you had to make a choice like that. But you're forgiven. The Lord has forgiven you if you've asked for that forgiveness. But it doesn't change the fact, and I don't say this towards you, but I'm saying this as if someone is trying to debate me or other people about the whole abortion issue. Well, it's a woman's choice. We can do this. Even there's people, there are videos of people saying, yeah, I kill my kids, you know, just wanting to be sneering and then, you know. Uh, at the very least, okay, it, whatever you believe. But, well, it's just a fee. It's not really a human being. It's just a fee. Like, okay, 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 okay. Then let's go with that logic right there. If you believe it's just a mass of tissue and flesh that eventually will grow into a human at some point, the process. Of course, most people believe that, believe in evolution too. You're killing that, right? Okay. That would eventually, if you believe that, if, it's, you know, it, it, if you believe that logic, that would eventually become a human being and you would give birth to it right okay so therefore it is murder you have killed something that was going to have life in your view eventually a human being that's murder most of the time always when you bring that out right there that ends the argument right there and then you get people that's like why well, kill my kids and they sneer they don't care no natural affection anymore love of many waxing cold and just don't care you know some people have these poor kids just to get tax breaks and money and uh, you know people are going to have a, this entire world each and every one of us we're going to stand before the Lord and we have a lot to answer for you better send your sins up before you go up there you better get forgiveness for them down here and get saved because after you know when the mercy as I said when that ark door clo the, the door of the ark closes Hey, honey, that's it. You're outside and here comes the rain. The fountains of the deep are going to break and the sky is going to, you know, it, it, that's it. Now, I went a little far on this, but people, when they get into stuff like this, and I'm sure you're the same way, you get passionate about it. I'm passionate about the cause of the Lord to get people saved. Seek and save that which is lost, but also destroy the works of the devil. That's my mission. Among other things that I do, that I feel led of the Lord to do, that he's called me to do. So at any rate, I don't want to hold you any longer. <laughs> we're, we're almost an hour and ten minutes, uh, hour and seven, right now, going almost an eight. Uh, but uh, there may be some more news articles come out later on I might get back to. Um so we'll see I don't know for sure we will not I don't know if I'll be doing a teaching or preaching type video today or not you know we got service tonight and you know got to prepare for that and uh, uh, we always stand ready just in case we uh, you know need to deliver God's Word you know he calls us to always be ready at a moment's notice to uh, you know stand and be ready to give an answer of the hope that's in you and you know that includes preaching and teaching God's Word uh, so, at any rate, uh, like I said, if there's anything that comes out that just that's just earth shaking, I uh, probably won't do another news video to them tomorrow. But we'll definitely do another teaching preaching video tomorrow. Uh, we'll have more uh, free time and uh, be able to do that. So, at any rate, I uh, don't want to hold you guys any longer. Uh, you know, I hope you guys have a good rest of the day. Uh, and uh, as always, I speak blessings in Christ upon each and every one of you and you know what if you don't know the Lord yet and the free pardon of sin turn to him before it's everlasting too late and that, that's the whole question are you saved you need to be saved you know there's multitudes coming you just have no idea the only safe place is going to be in the Lord's hand and nothing can snatch you out of his hand amen amen Hope everyone has a blessed day. And as I said, take care. And we will see you uh, in the next video. Talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye now.